everyone, my name is Griffin Furlong and I am a professional engineer and today we'll be going over grading. If you want a little recap or refresher, I highly suggest you visit my last video. I did a video on a grading 101. It was definitely more of an introductory video to the process of grading and we walked through the different slopes that you might use and we went ahead and we graded a little bit of this road here that you're seeing. In today's video, I wanna dive a little bit deeper into the engineering behind grading and we'll also dive into some detailed lot grading, especially towards the low point of the road and the high points. In the last video, I mentioned that grading is very important for stormwater management. Now, I'll have to mention that there are two other very important aspects of grading. Second is the visual appeal of the site. So as a civil engineer of a land development project like this, we are working hand in hand with the landscape architect and the developer. So a lot of times we'll have berms or end caps. So berms might be located more in the buffer areas which are adjacent to the property boundary. So if we go over here to the construction plans, you know, these lots 136 to 138 might have a berm adjacent to the property boundary. So in that case, future development over here can't you know peek into the backyards of the homes so we are constantly working with landscape architects to better understand our buffer requirements and berm requirements the third thing why grading is so important is actually earthwork so earthwork is one of the heaviest costs of a civil engineering project that next to the drainage system Import fill in Florida right now is ranging anywhere between $15 to $18 per cubic yard. So if you do the math there, if you end up being over 20,000 cubic yards in your project, that'll cost you around 300 grand. And that's not really a place where you want to be, so that's why grading and, and understanding how much fill you have on site is critical to the project. So now you should understand why grading is important. Now I want to dive into some of the lot grading. So let's get right into it. So since we went ahead and graded this road right here all the way up to the intersection high point, I wanna show you how to kind of work through the different grades of the lots here at 221 and 222. I do wanna zoom back out and just kind of show you the high level big picture of what I'm thinking when I'm grading a site. So we got a couple things going on here. One is we got two low points and I know that they're low points because we have inlets. So we got a low point right here and a low point right here. And it looks like right in between we have a high point. So assuming that the road has already been graded, I now want to look at the lots. And kind of what I'm thinking right here is the low point is always the critical area because this is where the driveways are going to be the most steep. Now, as we travel from left to right here, I know that my driveways are going to get less and less steep because if you think about it, we are going up in the road pavement here while pretty much these FFEs are remaining, I mean, for the most part unchanged, I think down here is a better example. So notice how these FFEs are pretty much staying unchanged. 78.6, 78.6, 78.6. However, your road is increasing in grade. So if, if this is going up, but this is remaining constant, these driveways from the building are getting less steep. So this is your most steep instance. So that's a couple of things that, you know, that I'm looking for as I'm grading a site especially a residential site. So number one is definitely driveways. The number two thing that I think about is the grading between the lots. So if I'm going here to this low point, there is a building that's going to be on this lot at an FFE of 78.4. And again, if you're in the FFE, that means that that is where you are standing inside of your home. Now directly outside of this building, you have what's called a lowest adjacent grade. Now let me actually kind of go to a blank space here and draw out this cross section. So if I were to draw a cross section between lot 221 and 222, it's going to look something like this. What you will be standing on is the FFE that's inside of the building right here. So that's where we will be standing. But then right here, you have the lowest adjacent grade, as we call it. And all this means is that is the point outside of the building that you can actually physically see. You'll notice that when you go outside, there's a little bit of concrete reveal there. This grade is really important because again, we're trying to make sure that these finished floors aren't flooding. We need water, storm water, to drain away from this building. 
So these are two very important grades here. Now, usually this lowest adjacent grade is anywhere between four to eight inches below the FFE. For our scenarios, I'm going to assume half a foot. So another important thing about this is that there is a side yard slope. This isn't going to be built up like this. It's definitely not going to be built up like this because then water drains right into your home. This swale will look something more like this. Cool. For side yard slopes, I like to use 2 to 10%. I really want to make 2 to 10% work. So that green line there is the lot line, and typically you have some sort of required setback that the county requires between lots. It can range anywhere between 5 you know, to 10 to 10 feet. Uh, for this example, I think I want to assume just, just 10 feet to make our calculations. So all that setback means is that you are required to have your building set back from that lot line. So this is pretty much what we're cooking with here. You know, if we have an idea of what our FFEs need to be, if we feel comfortable with those being set, then we can start setting these midpoint grades. If we know our right of way grades, we know how to set the midpoint of the lot because we are required in this instance to grade minimum 1%. So that's a very important assumption. We need to be grading minimum 1% up to that point. I'm going to throw a dimension on here. You're going to be checking to make sure that we're meeting the right slopes here. I'm determining the slope between uh, this midpoint and the right of way grade. So let's all do the math together. We got 77.51 minus 76.81. Divided by it's exactly 1%. So perfect. We are grading per the code. But now the other thing I'm going to check is that cross slope. So remember how I said that your lowest adjacent grade is going to be half a foot below this FFE. Now if we forgot, let's go all the way over here. So these FFEs were 78.4. That means that the lowest adjacent grade right there right at that point is half a foot lower and then we ended up calculating that midpoint grade that midpoint grade was 7751 so now let's do a double check of this side yard slope right here i definitely tell we have a drop here which is already good it would be bad if this grade was higher than this lowest adjacent grade that would be my immediate red flag but it looks like we have at least a 0.4 drop so i'm going to do 0.4 divided by 10 and that is roughly 4%. So that's perfect. That's within our range. So when I'm QAQ seeing this plan, I'm feeling good about that scenario. The most critical items that you need to grade your lots are the FFEs. You definitely need to know your typical side yard slopes. So you might need to look into your county's standards. I know our engineering judgment is usually anywhere between 2 to 10%. Anything above that 10% is getting quite steep but I mean, you can use that if you want. And then second to that is also the setbacks that you're using. All right, so just as a refresher, we examined our grade from the right of way all the way up to the mid lot. We examined that side yard slope between these lots. Now let's review a driveway. A couple things you need for the driveway slope is really the FFE. And let me draw this cross section out for you guys. So again, this is the FFE. This is the garage. And this is the driveway slope that we're trying to understand. Now, garage slopes can vary. It, it can usually be like an inch over every 20 feet. For this case, what I really like to do is I like to just make it easy on myself. I'm already at a four inch drop plus three quarters of an inch and an inch for every 20 feet. It usually rounds out to roughly half a foot. So I'm going to say that the beginning of this driveway grade is half a foot below the FE. FFE minus half a foot. So if I know that relationship between the start of my driveway and the end, I'm cooking with fire here. So the typical setback for the building is, at least for this site, is 20 feet. That right-of-way line all the way up to the driveway. So let's start with lot 221. So we know the FFE is 78.4. And now that we know our relationship for the start of our driveway, we can do 78.4 minus half a foot. So we're starting with 77.9. And let's say if our garage was on this right side here, well, I have 20 feet from that starting point of the driveway 
to this right of way line. The right of way might be somewhere right here and it'll be 20 feet long. So we're grading from 77.9, which is a grade roughly right there, 77.9, all the way to 76.81. So let's do the math, 77.9, got 5%, which is totally fine. Our typical driveway slopes that you wanna be is typically between 2% to 12%. I will say 10 to 12% is relatively steep. You're gonna have you know homeowners that might not like that. You really have to know your community, so understand you know who your community is for. If you have really, really rich people, I'm not sure that they're gonna want 10 to 15 percent because they're going to have a tough time driving their Lamborghinis or Mercedes up, up that driveway. So just be cautious of, of the slopes that you're using. Again, you can't really go wrong with anywhere between 2 to 8 percent for your driveways. All right, so I hope this really helped. Again, we walked through the relationship between the home and the garage and the driveway. We then looked at the relationship between the side yard slopes between lots and we looked at the side yard slope longitudinally from the right-of-way point all the way up to the midpoint again the main point of all this is to not make this site way too steep and to make sure that we get storm water all to the right place storm water is going all to the right place because we calculated the minimum slopes here to ensure that this water is flowing to our low points in later videos we will dive into commercial site grading but I hope this helped for now. If you haven't watched my last video, I would highly suggest you check that out. We dive into the very high level aspects of grading and we review the different typical slopes. If you found this helpful, please hit the subscribe button and also comment below if you're interested in any other topics. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Have a great day and I will see you next time.